Welcome my friends, Evan Gray here. Today is day four of repairing my step van at the mechanics. And yesterday was just a day of gathering up parts that didn't actually work on the step van. We're installing two parts today. One part arrived yesterday, one part's arriving today. Uh, the part that he is installing right now is on the back of the fuel pump. There's a solenoid there that I guess is some sort of cutoff solenoid. So when you turn off the engine, it actually cuts the power to the fuel pump so that it discontinues pumping fuel into the system. So apparently this is a solenoid has springs on it and they sort of wear out and it becomes sticky and just discontinues working. So that's the first thing that's being replaced today. That was diagnosed by Badge, who you've seen in previous episodes. Thank you, Badge, for figuring that out. Item number two that we're going to be replacing is the uh, coolant thermostat sensor. Uh, actually, it's a sending unit because sensors, I guess, you have to have the digital computer. But back in the day, back in the 1995-96 era, they called this a sensor. Today, they call it a sending unit. So anyway, this is analog, non-digital two wires coming out of it and it just monitors the temperature of the coolant and sends that up to a gauge on the dash as well as to a light and I think that there's some sort of cutoff there. Many thanks to Steve in Denver, my mechanic buddy out there, for diagnosing and figuring out that that's fried. So hopefully replacing these two components, I'll be back in business and be running today. It's uh, really important that I get this vehicle running today because tomorrow at 2 o'clock my tenant is going to be moving into my rental property so I no longer really have a place to stay. So I'll either have to move back in the step van or I would have to ask favors of friends or get a hotel room. So that is what's going on today. Here you can see the doghouse has been taken off from the inside of the step van and the mechanic is over there working on this area right here in the corner which is where the fuel pump is located at. Down here on the ground you can see the old solenoid that was just removed here. You can see that it was uh, damaged here on the top and that's what was happening. The spring was completely disconnected here as well as a little piece on a bracket was broken. So this is being replaced right now with a brand new unit. It's looking good. Just a quick update. The second part just barely arrived from FedEx. This is the coolant temperature sensor uh, or sending unit, I guess, because this is not a computerized unit. Anyway, um, the mechanic is installing that right now. So I should know here in probably 20 minutes or so if the step van is going to be running and if it's repaired or if I'll be here for another day or two for some other issue. Crossing my fingers here. Wish me luck. Here's the mechanic is installing the last part here crawling underneath there. So hopefully here in a couple minutes we'll have a running step van. We just did a test up front here, crossing fingers that it was going to work, but failure. Engine didn't even click, didn't start over, no lights on the dash, nothing. And went and looked at the battery. Brand new battery just dropped in here a day and a half ago, was completely dead. And I don't know why. So apparently there's something that is draining the battery. So who knows what's going on now. I'm developing a theory now as to why the battery, the brand new battery is completely dead and why my previous two batteries were dead. So my theory is this, that when you shut off the engine that there is a solenoid on the back of the fuel pump and that solenoid activates in order to cut off the fuel going to the engine which is why your engine will die. However, if that solenoid is fried or the electronics are messed up on it, which is what's happened here, my theory is that solenoid is stuck and power is being drawn to that solenoid. So after you've shut off your engine for the next day or so, it's constantly sucking power out of the battery to keep that solenoid engaged. It's like a uh, little motor sort of uh, with a piston on it. As I understand it, that's what a solenoid is. But anyway, so that's constantly engaged and constantly drawing power off the battery bank. So I would suspect that my previous batteries were probably still healthy and probably okay, but it was the solenoid that was sucking the power off. 
and because this has been sitting for a day and a half or almost two days since this other new battery was installed that it completely drained that over that period of time with this solenoid so anyway those of you that are experts with uh, electronics and with automobiles I would love to hear your input what do you think is that possible well the batteries have been charged here for a little bit and we just did a couple of tests unfortunately no joy uh, still having complications apparently the solenoid is installed and the, there's a positive there's a ground wire and then there is a wire that sort of is the activation wire I think that goes off of a relay so apparently the relay may also be bad so I may have to order a relay um, and get that installed we don't know and right now we can't seem to locate that relay I'm trying to do some work online looking at my service manuals Unfortunately for all of this stuff, my service manual that I have, which is several hundred pages, is extremely lacking in certain areas. Some areas it's very detailed, other areas there's just nothing. And on this particular thing, there's just no instructions at all. So I am uh, sleuthing and hunting right now. Would love to see comments from all of you. I will probably will have solved this by the time that you see this video. but. Um, would be interested in hearing your input and some tips on where to look for the relay to go to the fuel pump solenoid uh, switch anyway so I think that's what it's called this is a good sign we're making progress it's running right now he's doing some tests they're about 10 minutes into the test here things are looking good the engine's finally warming up temperature gauge is working. It's in about 170 right now. That's excellent. So assuming that it will start and stop correctly, and one last thing, making sure we don't have a drain going on, drawing off the battery when the engine is off. So we just got to make sure that last little thing, then I think I might be done here. Finally, after four days here, I can get out of here. Tom over here is doing the last of the tests and he's testing the voltage to make sure that there's no draw on it. Our theory was that the solenoid was drawing off battery power when the thing was completely off. So we think we solved that with the new solenoid in place. Um, I have a new battery plus the old battery and they're both fully charged now. We did probably oh, a 15 minute test here. Engine temperature gauge is working. Uh, it starts and stops. Uh, sitting still anyway. I mean the engine will start and stop. So I think we are done. I just need to pay my bill and get out of here. After four days, I'm elated to actually be driving the step van away from this mechanic shop. Although you guys have been absolutely fabulous. That's Thank okay. You. Thank you so much, Tom. You've been very You're welcome. fabulous. You're welcome. This guy is really great. He's been uh, sort of teaching me or mentoring me along the way as I've had questions. And I think we've uh, worked well together. Yes. So I drove from the mechanics back to my rental property and Stefan is running fantastic. Everything is great. I think we've solved everything. Decided not to keep the new battery because I think the old battery was good. On the way back to the rental property, I stopped past an auto store and had them test both of the batteries. And both of my old batteries seem to be working great. They gave them a clean bill of health, which is exciting news for me. And I was able to return the one new battery and not have to pay for that. Um, I did pay my bill to the mechanic. It came to a little over $700, and that included a $200 part. That uh, fuel cutoff solenoid piece was a $200 part directly from Freightliner and from Cummins. And so it's just a pricey piece. I paid for the other two parts, which were almost nothing. So about $750 out the door for repairing three items and four days in a mechanic's shop. I guess that's not too bad, given that that was four days and that these guys were just jumping on it and not making me wait for days and days. So I'm pleased with that. Thank you, John. Thank you to all of the mechanics who helped me out. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Badge, for helping with your diagnostics. And thank you to all of you who have been writing comments down below and giving me advice and input on the step van. 
Um, I've decided because it's uh, late Friday to spend the weekend here in Lakeland and then on Monday on my way out of town to drop past the DMV to get my driver's license registration in the step van. Dale, who you've seen in numerous episodes now, has once again come through and been just an awesome individual helping me out and is allowing me to spend the weekend at his place, out at his property, parking the step van there so that I'm able to depart from Lakeland on Monday morning. Thank you so much, Dale, for all your help running me around and helping me try to diagnose things and for all of your efforts and help at the rental property with repairs and driving me around. You're the best Uber driver I've ever had, and I give you two thumbs up and star ratings for your excellent and amazing help. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future episode.